Good evening, guys. Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Today, we have a couple different things planned for the car. Most of them are just mods I had on my Z06 that I'm actually going to move over to the ZR1. And if you haven't seen any of the mods that I had on my Z06, then this might be a good video for you to check out because there's a lot of good things here that will definitely help make your car look way better and actually kind of improve functionality as well. All right, guys, so there's nothing huge on this list, nothing overly crazy or anything that people can't really do. What I'm gonna show you is just some of the simple mods you can do with the car to improve the stock performance of certain aspects of the car. So number one is gonna actually be the guard lug nuts right here. I've actually talked about these in my previous upload with my C7 Z06 and how I really like them for a couple different reasons. Number one, the quality is really great. And this was recently rediscovered when I took them all off my Z06 to move them over to the ZR1 and they still looked brand new. So I actually went ahead and already put them on, but this is what the package looks like. And of course, I'll link all these down in the description below for you guys to check out if you're interested in any of these mods. But I already put them on the wheels and here's what they look like. Now, my wheels on the ZR1 are the satin graphite color, but these black lug nuts from the guards look perfect in there. The chrome was definitely too much. You guys, by now, you know I'm not a big chrome guy. And like I said, they still look brand new, even after being used on my Z06 for almost two years and now being taken off a couple different times and being put onto the ZR1, they still look new. So definitely check these out. If you guys have a dark colored rim, these are perfect. Number two is actually gonna be something, again, for your rim, but even smaller. It's actually gonna be the TPMS sleeve. Normally, on your stock wheels, come around here and I'll show you, we basically have a silver colored TPMS sleeve slash nut. Now, we could actually take that off and replace it with this little guy. This is a black one. These are on Amazon. Again, I'll link them in the description down below, but these just help blend everything in. And again, if you have a dark colored rim, these just really, really make the rims look great because there's no contrasting silver random piece sticking out of the rim. So these are pretty easy to install, but I'm gonna show you how to just in case you have any questions. These are actually a 12 millimeter nut. So if you have a 12 millimeter socket, you would just put it right on there. Unscrew the old one and screw on the new one. You don't have to worry about letting any air out of the tires because just unscrewing this by itself is not gonna do that. I actually have a special tool for this. This is just plastic. One end is 12 millimeter, the other end is 11 millimeter, and it's specifically for releasing the TPMS nut. You can use a 12 millimeter socket, but this being plastic, just make sure nothing gets scratched up. Now I'm just gonna take my tool here, put it right on there, and just loosen it up. And then once you get it loose, you can actually just reach in there with your fingers and pull it out. And there's the stock one. Stock one compared to the black one. And then to put the black one on is literally just the opposite. We're going to screw that on there and then just tighten it down. And then to finish it off even more, I got some black TPMS valve caps that just kind of help blend in the valve stem even better. And they look really good on the rims. Like I said, this stuff was on my Z06 and I really like the way it looked. So I'm just transferring it all over to the ZR1. And there's the finished product. Black TPMS sleeve, black TPMS cap. Looks way better, way more stealth with the black lug nuts. Everything's looking good. And even though I already have them installed, these are honorable mentions because the ACS blacked out side markers really look awesome on this car. Of course, these came off of my Z06 as well, but I'm not gonna be able to get to show you the install because I kind of did it in the parking lot when buying this car, but I wanted to mention them because they're really, really nice looking. They're really good quality and it fits the car perfectly. So we got the one in the rear and of course the one in the front. Now, because the car is black, these literally just look like more of the same here, but what I'm going for is kind of a blacked out look. So this works perfectly here. On my red Z06, they really helped blend the red and black together as well. But on this one, they're gonna just give me a blacked out look. I also wanted to touch on the ACS XL Rock Guards. Again, I installed these in the parking lot when buying the car, but I do have a video of installing these on my red Z06, which I'll link right up here somewhere. 
And if you wanna check it out, go ahead. But honestly, it's only one seven millimeter bolt up underneath the side skirt here, and then five clips holding this thing in. So it's really not a hard install, but if you need any assistance with it, like I said, I'll link that video right up here, but definitely check these out as well. Next is gonna be this set of LEDs. The C7 Corvette is pretty much all LED in any one of its actual models. So the Stingray, Grand Sport, Z06, ZR1, they're all LED, except for two lights in the trunk and the two license plate lights. So that's where these guys come in. I'll link them in the description below, of course. They're from Amazon, from a Corvette mods type website, but they basically send you matching color LEDs. The temperature of the LED will match the other LEDs on the interior. And instead of the back trunk bulbs being just regular incandescent bulbs, now there'll be LEDs to match the rest of the lighting in the ZR1 or any C7 you have. So I'll show you real quick how to install these because they're pretty simple. Should only take a couple minutes and it's definitely gonna improve your lighting experience. Experience. While we're at it though guys, check this out. Look at how close the actual hatch of this comes to the big wing. I mean, you literally can't put a finger in there to actually lift this up. You have to lift it from the side like I am. If you put your finger in there, you're probably gonna lose it. Just kidding, but it would freaking hurt. Here's the incandescent in the back and there's the LED in the front. You can clearly see the temperature difference and it's not a pretty sight. Why GM chose to leave these bulbs incandescent while everything else in the car was LED? No idea. So these are pretty easy to pop out. You just want to get your trim removal tool, push it in the corner right here, and just pop it right out. Now these are gonna be kind of hot. If you pop it out with a trim removal tool, you shouldn't get burn or anything, but you're gonna to want to take care because these things get pretty hot. Another reason to use LED. And then we'll go ahead and put in the new LED, which just slides in there just like that. And as you can see, much more updated in color and matches the other LEDs in the C7. LED, incandescent. Definitely a much nicer, cleaner look. Next is gonna be the license plate lights. You can see them right there and right there. We're gonna actually pop those out and replace the bulb again with a color matched LED. Just give it an updated, more modern look. Again, why GM didn't do this in a car that had LEDs everywhere else, I have no idea. So just like that, guys. You can pry it down and we're gonna go ahead and pop that bulb out. There's the LED installed. I'll go ahead and turn on the lights just to make sure they light up and they don't need to be reversed for polarity. And as long as they're good, we'll go ahead and put it back in the housing. And here again is the incandescent LED. You can definitely see the difference there. Not only is the LED brighter, but it's also way more modern looking. So let's go ahead and get this one done and then we are good to go. Look at that guys, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber everywhere. You open up the hood, carbon fiber underneath too. Unbelievable. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to take off the supercharger cover here, the water deflection area, and get over to the actual intake and get that TKO nanofiber filter put in the ZR1 as well. Mmm, carbon fiber. These screws here are actually 10 millimeter bolt heads. I'll go ahead and take these off. And then down here, there are seven millimeter bolts, four of them holding the water deflector on. I'm going to get both of these things off and then we can start into the actual air box over there. We're going to put that TKO performance air filter in there for more power. This is what the ZR1 looks like without that carbon fiber cover. Definitely interesting that they still took the time to put Corvette on there and everything, considering you'll never see that under normal circumstances. All right, so I had to loosen up the actual intake tube at the throttle body, as well as right here, right before the mass airflow sensor in order to get this part of the filter housing apart. But once I did, that's it right there. 
It's the exact same one on the Z06, and it looks pretty much the same one as the Grand Sport and Stingray as well, which is probably why this thing benefits so much from an air intake. The GM Performance air intake adds like 17 horsepower or something just because this filter that is in here is just so generic and cheap. I mean, it's just unreal that they would put something like this in a 755 horsepower car. I mean, that's it. That's what $140,000 will get you. I mean, it is just as cheap as it comes. If the GM Performance one gains 17 horsepower, the TKO one will probably pick up at least 15. With how much horsepower this car already has, you won't even be able to feel that, but I'm mostly doing it just for the better filtration and possibly better airflow than the stock one. All right, so here we go. This is the same one I used in my Z06. It was only in there for maybe three, 400 miles, nothing major. It still looks perfectly clean. I'm not gonna bother cleaning it. I'm just gonna throw it in there and see what we get. And of course we have the San Diego Designs cubby shelf, which is a lot more useful than you'd think. I've mentioned this before in my Z06 videos, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my ZR1 as well. There it is, easy installation. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. So I hope you liked all the little mods that I was able to get done on the ZR1. Even though most of them came from my Z06, I think that all C7 should have most of these mods at least because most of them really help improve functionality. And if nothing else, they give you that little bit of extra sportiness or cool factor. Definitely check them out, guys. None of the mods here were overly expensive, so it really is something you could do whether you have the Stingray, the Grand Sport, the Z06, or even the ZR1. Any one of the C7 cars will benefit from all of these mods. But anyway, guys, if you liked what you saw, give me a big thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything we talked about here today, shoot them in the comment section down below or send me an email, horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com. I'd be happy to hear from you. Please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't yet. Like I said before, I have loads of C7 and C8 content coming for you. You're not gonna wanna miss it. And as always guys, I'll catch you in the next one.